Angeles, City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, where tonight it's top-ranked boxing on ESPN. Brought to you by the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud. All the bouts you see tonight are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with a 10-round bout. This is in the super flyweight division. When the bell rings, the men in charge of the action, referee Larry Rosadilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the tan trunks with cream-colored trim, weighing in at 114 pounds. His professional record, 15 and four, with three draws, six KOs to his credit, he comes to us from Mexicali, Mexico, and he is the former Mexican champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Antonio El Villasana Ruiz. Well, there's the latest sacrificial lamb on the and road back for Johnny Tapia. Fighting out of Antonio the Ruiz. Wearing the black trunks with teal trim, weighing in at 113 and one half pounds. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, he's undefeated with a record of 23 and 0. One draw. 14 KOs, introducing the baby face assassin, Johnny Tapia. And of course, it's the man we're featuring here in this chief recording program, Johnny Tapia. Now clean, I'm glad to say, after years of drug abuse, which of course don't mix with boxing. This is his third comeback fight, and the comeback started in March of 94. With Jamie Oliveira, you may remember, on your sort of the fourth round knockout. Last round beat Arturo Estrada in two. And uh, Ruiz, a former Mexican champion, and don't forget the Mexicans actually come very tough at this weight. And not a great deal of uh, point in telling you who is boxed and who is beaten because uh, many of these Mexican names sound so familiar, don't they? And they could uh, actually be different fighters with different weight difference, so I shan't bore you with that. But Tapia, exciting, go-forward type of fighter, good left hooker as well. Johnny Tapia turned pro back in March of 88. It was a three and a half year layoff in October of 1990. Now he's back on track. And it's worth remembering that Tapia holds a win over Michael Carvajal as an amateur. And of course would love to get a rematch with that young fella in the pro ranks. In fact, they should have boxed. He was on his way to it when he uh, went off the rails and that would have been a million pounds a piece. Quite a lot of money for flyweight. At the moment Tapia is still being randomly drug tested by the New Mexico State Athletic Commission. They in fact withhold his first money until he comes up clean. And if, of course, he ever gets caught again, that's it. He's finished for life. So a lot at stake for Tapia. Twenty-seven years of age now, so really hasn't got a great deal of time to mess about. Flyweights tend to come to the end of the road a lot sooner than the other weights. Tapia, USBA champion, made four defences of the title. Still unbeaten, 24 fights. And uh, Tapia, never slow to capitalise when he's got a man on the hook. But it looks like uh, Ruiz can take a wallop. And very cool as well, Ruiz under pressure at the moment. And one of the reasons that Ruiz may well have been selected to fight Tapia here is the fact that he's only stopped four in his 15 wins. Yeah. 
lovely double left hook there from Tapia. Good round there for Johnny Tapia. But I think we're going to see some stubborn resistance from Ruiz. Trained by Paul Chavez, 70 years of age now, never really lost faith in Johnny Tapia, but must have been awfully uh, frustrated by this young fella. And there's that lovely left hook that Tapia out of it, almost put Ruiz over. That's a, a sign of how tough Ruiz is going to be in this match. To say they do breed them very tough at this weight in Mexico. Into the second then. And for all of us who uh, condemn Tapia's life of drugs and associated crime, should remember that his mother was brutally murdered when he was only uh, eight years of age. And that murder was never solved. He was in fact reared by his grandparents. And uh, obviously that's taken a terrible toll on the uh, psychological makeup of this fighter. Started boxing when he was 11. His grandfather encouraged him, he's an ex-fighter himself. Twice became Golden Gloves champion of New Mexico. The first time in 93, when he was still in high school. 101 wins as an amateur and only 21 losses. Stop 65 opponents. Good form, that. Of course, the highlight of that amateur career was that win over Michael Carvajal. And his favourite fighter, incidentally, like so many of you, Julio Cesar Chavez. So that's the lowdown on Johnny Tapia. Name emblazoned across the uh, waistband of his trunks. One beautiful left hook that staggered Ruiz in the opener. But Ruiz remaining calm and composed. Sharp rights there through the middle from Ruiz. And again, that lovely right straight through the middle there from Antonio Ruiz. Ruiz not afraid to stand within arm's reach of Tapia. And he's obviously a counter puncher, doesn't like to go forward starting the exchanges, but uh, certainly prepared to stand there and trade when they come. This is a very good, solid test for Tapia. Not a great deal so far in this second round. Again, who was there catching Tapu with the right. Unfortunately for Tapia, Ruiz is not a big banger. Consequently, Tapia can march forward with impunity almost, and the left hook of Beast there on the bell, threatening a bit of overtime. I don't think it was a great hit in the second round. In fact, I'm going to go levels on that one. Tapia taking the opener. And it's worth mentioning also that Tapia, back in 89, holds a, a points win over John Michael Johnson, who went on to become bantamweight champion. Also a very good uh, points win in a USBA title defense over Luigi Camputaro. Good form. So Antonio Ruiz then, not afraid to stand there and mix punches with this hard punching. Johnny Tapia from Albuquerque in New Mexico. Round three of a scheduled ten. Tapia, point in front. A 
And Johnny Tapper always did favour the left hook. And uh, you'll see plenty of those coming into both head and body. Tapper there acknowledging a nice little punch from Ruiz. Shot from Tapio, the right that time. And Johnny Tapio got in a number 29 with the independent world boxing rankings. Courtesy of that win in his comeback over Oliveira. Find Ruiz rated in the top 50. And again, lovely right there from Tapu, who's now got a nosebleed. So that just goes to show how effective these little right crosses from uh, Ruiz have been. worth mentioning that uh, Ruiz has also boxed for the uh, NABF championship and he suffered a technical loss in Tijuana against Miguel Martinez got cut <laughs> well, this one's warming up into a packing little uh, 10 rounder Tapia going forward, making the fight in this third round. Still walking on to punches, though. But virtue of his aggression, he's going to win this session, I think. Yep, good round this for Tapia. create reflections. Curved glass creates distortions. So they create the super flat, super trinitron. It has the world's flattest tube to give the world's finest picture. Tuesday morning. And not a spectator in sight. This is when Grand Prix are really won. Our engineers are testing the new Ford ZTEC R Formula One engine, the power behind the world championship leader. Testing like this also reaps rewards for you. ZTEC multivalve technology is already on the road in many of today's Ford cars. We race, you get the result. Motorcycling. Throughout the 1994 season, full live coverage of every race from every Grand Prix. Whether it's 125, 250 or 500 cc, Eurosport is the place to follow the World Motorcycling Championship. This program is brought to you by Suzuki. Ride the winds of change. The British Motorcycling Grand Prix, Sunday 1pm, live on Eurosport. Opal, official sponsor of the Football World Cup USA 94, offers you the opportunity to win a limited edition Opal World Cup Corsa Sport. Runner-up prizes include 100 action-packed Opal History of the World Cup videos and 100 exclusive Opal World Cup t-shirts. To play and win, call now on the Eurosport line. Opal wishes you and your team good luck in this summer's competition on Eurosport. Well, Johnny Tapia on a high here. He's thoroughly enjoying himself. And I think uh, it's safe to say that Ruiz is probably enjoying this as well. It's a nice little fight. Good rhythm. And 
think once again Tapia almost threatened a bit of overtime at the belt. Round four. Tapia won two of the first three, I think. combination there from Tapia, a double right cross. Really does, does like to dip that left shoulder and start hooking away. surprise to see Ruiz on the floor in this one but equally no surprise to see him get up well that's the second little clash of heads that uh, Tappy has complained about but it's that kind of fight really there's nothing malicious in that you get two fighters who do exactly the same move at the same time and you often get a clash of heads. I don't like it to be referred to as a butt, which does imply that it was deliberate. So many fights, of course, won and lost on a clash of heads. already seen Tapia win on one occasion like that as you saw in the preview to this match when he fought Santiago Caballero in the last defense of his USBA title he actually won that on a technical decision clash of heads shut his left eye Of course it's debatable whether Tapia will ever get himself back in the promising position he had four years ago. Especially at this advanced age for a flyweight, as I say, of 27. Well, that's not a bad round there for Ruiz, but most of the way Tapia was landing, Ruiz was defending. Just to remind you that uh, the WBC champion at flyweight is the Russian Yuri Arapajakov, the fighter too. And there's two ties, in fact, who rule the IBF and WBA, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce their names. And then you've got that little battler, baby Jake Matlala, is WBO champion. This is round five. gets the impression that Tapia will probably be happier against the man who actually comes forward rather than step back. As you can see, that's what Ruiz is doing. And it's leaving Tapia a bit short with some of his punches. Quick combinations now from Tapia. Of course, that's the one thing that will uh, prevent Ruiz from getting out of range is to, for Tapia to up the speed. Punching right there from Tapia.
Well, both men now fully warmed up. Quite often, of course, you see fighters using the first couple of three rounds to get into their stride, get the heart pumping. And now they look like they've both found their optimum level. Some lovely crisp punches coming in from Tapia. And he's noticeably quicker, of course. Fifth, it's been a very good round so far for Johnny Tapia. Possibly the best he's had so far. Good round there. Well, Rue is not getting hurt, but he's getting caught. That left hook he, uh, he took in the first round really did almost put him over. But uh, Rue is now fully aware of what's coming his way. He's steeled against it. And yet the punches still come. Five gone, five to go in this uh, flyweight contest. Halfway stage, round six. And fought in good heart, this one as well. So the reformed drug addict. Johnny Tapia in the black and blue. The opponent, Antonio Villasana Ruiz, the former Mexican champion. And NBA title challenger. So he's no mug. Villasana had three losses towards the middle and end of 93 but uh, he's back on track with three wins coming into this one in those efforts. And far more knockouts are in fact created by hooks than by straight punches, believe it or not. You'd think a thumping straight right through the middle would do the job, but in fact, it's these short hooks that do it far more often. Of course, people do get knocked out by straight lights and other punches, but uh, far more likely to be a hook. Inside the last minute of the sixth. Referee for this one, Larry Rosadilla. And once again, a good round is for the local man, Johnny Tapia. I said the local man, this in fact is the Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. Tapia from Albuquerque in New Mexico, which of course is the home of the former great light heavyweight champion, Bob Foster. And Tapia looking to become the first man, in fact, since Foster, from this particular state, to become world champion. And what a great fighter Foster was. He won his championship in 1968, you might remember, beating Dick Tiger. 
Good round there for Tapia. Foster defended his crown, believe it or not, for six years before he retired in 1974. Came back a year later and it proved to be a fruitless comeback. He was uh, just about finished by then. And the irony about uh, Foster's career was no matter how good he was as a light heavy, he never beat a heavyweight. Isn't that strange? So into the seventh then. Putting the home straight. Johnny Tapia so far has won every round on my card with the exception of a level second, I thought. Unless we see a final spurt by Antonio Ruiz over this last four rounds, I can't imagine him closing the gap. Maybe face the assassin then. On the left, Johnny Tapia still working away against the head and body of this Mexican. And Ogle is there, counters the nice left hook. And a good right hand as well. Blistering speed in these combinations by Tapia. Making a big, big difference here. Getting caught earlier because he made a reasonably moderate start as far as the speed is concerned. But now really is whipping them home. Good right there from Ruiz, but uh, took one. And that was just about on the side from Tapia. together This looks like another good round for Tapia, but I think Ruiz has had his moments in this session. Curved surfaces create reflections. Curved glass creates distortions. Slowly create the super flat, super trinitron. It has the world's flattest tube to give the world's finest picture. There's that lovely right cross from Ruiz that caught Tapia just over a minute ago in the uh, seventh. But most of the way, Johnny Tapia was in charge. Probably the best round that Ruiz has had for some time. Although, as I say, he hasn't won it. So, into the last three. This is the eighth. <laughs> Lovely, crisp, accurate punches there from Tapia. He's what we describe in the trade as a box fighter. He can do it one way or t'other. So normally likes to do both at once. Boxes way in, 
and then start blasting. Doesn't like to take a backward step, which is something he might have to develop as he goes up the ladder, because you've got to be capable of doing everything when you get to world class. This is just the kind of workout that Tapia needs. Don't forget his last two fights have uh, lasted exactly six rounds between them. A lovely work there from Tapia. Great speed of punch. can really sap your confidence as far as punch power can, is concerned his expression hasn't changed he's been hit with some lovely punches but uh, still there good right again from Ruiz punches quite as quick as Tapia does. No, me neither. Very quick puncher. Great asset. Nice left hook back from Ruiz. And a nice rally there just before the bell. Good stuff. Good round there for Tapia. This is the penultimate round, the ninth. And you'd assume that uh, Ruiz is going to go the whole route. He's taken a lot of good stuff throughout this contest for eight rounds and hasn't looked like caving in, so no reason to suspect he will here. And that percentage figure is very misleading. Just imagine, you throw one punch, it lands. That's a 100% record. Your opponent can throw a 1,000, and only 300 land. Massive difference. Quite a brave decision, I think, by Tapia's handers to uh, accept this match. Rue is far from washed up, as you can see, possibly lacking a bit of ambition. Because there are times, I think, when you'd accept that there's things he could do that he's not doing. Like that, he's uh, defending when there's nothing coming his way, instead of actually throwing punches when he could, I'm sure. Yes, I think this one could have been a lot closer had Ruiz decided to fight instead of survive.
But just to reiterate the records then, Johnny Tapia's won 23, drawn one. And the draw, in fact, was in his professional debut. And he stopped 14 opponents. Antonio Ruiz as the third. Oops, that's it. <laughs> Almost. Ruiz, well, he's won 15, lost four, drawn three, stopped four. Not a great deal, I don't think, in the ninth round, but uh, once again, Tapia taking it. So the tenth and final round then. And it's been a pretty sporting contest, as you may well have noticed that uh, Tapia on occasion at the end of the round has threatened to do something in the overtime session, but uh, that's exuberance rather than spite. Nothing malicious in that movement at all. So he just needs to keep out of bother here in this last three minutes to take a pretty clear point win, I think. of course is, is Tapia prepared to settle for points or will he go looking for the knockout he's got the sense he'll just keep this one steady get a good stiff 10 round under the belt and that will do him the world of good one back though from Ruiz oh this is a nice little set two now in this last round and Ruiz gets through the good left hook and this would be a disaster for Tapu's career if he were to take a big wallop and go down and out in this last round so far and uh, they've not been bad before have they again it's the speed of these combinations from Tapia that's making the difference undoubtedly Ruiz has got through some nice punches in this last round but Tapia still in front And, well, the first time in the fight that uh, Tapia got an illegal shot home was right at the end of the round. Good fight there. Just top up the score. And as I, say, I don't think he lost the round. Hundred and ninety-one on my card. That means uh, nine rounds to zero and one even. I have to wait for the judges. See how they saw it. And Hank Ellis Peru scores it 100 to 90 for the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated. Yeah, Johnny Chaffee gets it. One judge there takes two, three rounds off his uh, 100 total. But that's three on the spin in the comeback. We've got more action for you. The main event is going to follow. I hope you'll stay with us.